last month, after having gone above and beyond to win the work, I was lucky enough to direct a short film about food innovation for the king of fast food. Even though this film was only primarily to be seen by employees and franchise owners of the burger and nugget giants, the film still had a pretty decent budget, and I saw this as an opportunity to impress the agency that handled all of their commercial work. So I was really keen to do anything within the budgetary and time constraints to make this film the best it could possibly be. One of these things included bringing in a specialist food cinematographer. That's literally all they shoot. There was a whole long list of talented cinematographers I was keen to put forward for this job. But as many of you watching will be aware, if you haven't made a type of job before, you're unlikely to get the opportunity to make it for a first time. It's a real weird situation. The agency needed to see all sorts of examples of previous food work that would pretty much look exactly like the food work we were about to shoot in order to sign the cinematographer off. Even though I'm perfectly capable of directing a film about food innovation, I spent one evening specifically shooting some fast food footage just to win this job. After having put forward various different options, we ended up going with the incredibly seasoned, a little food pun for you there, food cinematographer and sometimes director Nick Sawyer, whose previous work already included McDonald's, KFC and Ben & Jerry's to name a few. I've acted as cinematographer on a lot of the jobs that I've directed this year, and on the ones that I haven't, it's been a while since I've worked with someone new. So I was really looking forward to working with someone so experienced in this area and getting the opportunity to learn. I was also incredibly lucky to have another incredibly experienced veteran of the food commercial game on board, in the form of our food economist, Elaine. What's a food economist, you might be asking? Well, it's a food stylist. They make the food look good, the bun plump, the lettuce fresh. Why it's termed economist here in the UK, I don't know, but it is. Working with this level of behind the scenes talent was something new for me. So what did I learn about the specialities of shooting food? In all honesty, there wasn't as much to have learned as I would have hoped. Some terminology that was new to me. For example, if you ask for a lineup from the food economist, you're essentially asking for a food stand-in. It's not the real deal, it's just to set up the shot. Then they'll bring in the star in finesse when camera's ready to shoot. I learned that glycerin can be used alongside water to give thicker droplets that are clearly visible when shooting high frame rates. I don't want to brag, but I was already in the know about the use of cooking oil to make a burger look moist. But there's that if you weren't. As for shooting, it was all pretty straightforward. A key light, some bounce of the fill, and a very strong backlight. Aside from the product shots, we shot everything on a Phantom Flex camera, allowing us to shoot up to 1000 frames per second in 4K. To shoot at frame rates this high, you need a lot of light. A lot of flicker-free light. As our cinematographer Nick does this on a weekly basis, he actually had his own outrageously bright LED units custom built. As a general use light, they wouldn't be particularly flexible, but for shooting at high frame rates, they were incredibly powerful and didn't take up too much space. I learned that without specialized rigs, and I'm sure even with them, much like animals and children, food is incredibly unpredictable. And it's very much a question of trying the same shot over and over again until everything just falls in the right way and in the best plane of focus. Slow motion flour falling through the air was created by simply piling the flour up on a spare locked off flag and smacking it from underneath. To get this oil pouring shot right, Nick used the arm of a sea stand to spread the liquid as it fell. This epic macro shot of some peppercorns being crushed was achieved with Nick's own mortar that he'd angle grinded in half in order for the camera to be able to see the action. A point on the Phantom Flex, a camera that I've never shot before myself when DPing. It's expensive. I saw the quotes. £1,500 for the day for the camera body, £400 for the transcode station, £475 for an operator, and they were charging £140 for every one terabyte of data transcoded. Not to mention the cost of the larger than normal hard drives needed. That's a big additional price tag for kit in order to shoot super slow-mo. And that's not including any pricey macro lenses or lighting. It was a really great experience having the more knowledgeable on set with me for the food day. We didn't necessarily get to move at the speed that's required for these sorts of jobs, but fortunately I could make up for some of the lack of footage elsewhere on set with a now spare Alexa Mini in between setups in the afternoon. I'm up for directing more food stuff in the future, and that's definitely more likely to happen now that I've got this job on my reel. But as always, more time shooting would be nice to be able to move at the pace required. There's a lot to prepare, and so many people standing by waiting for the necessary lead time in order to prepare their bit of the puzzle. When there's this much to capture, I could have really benefited from having a first assistant director on set in order to keep on top of things. I hope you found this video somewhat helpful. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and come back next week for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge. Thank you.